this is just acrylic paper. So it comes in a pad uh, and um, I've just taken it off the pad and taped it onto a bit of board just to keep it a bit flatter. And as I said, I'm just going to use um, a marker pen now just to do a quick drawing of the of the shape that we're going to try and paint. So uh, we have this um, rock that's sort of jutting out into the into the sea. Now to give the impression that we're looking um, up and over sort of something, then the horizon is, is the key to sort of making it feel like you're looking over the top as opposed to looking at the side of it. Because if you can see, we can see a little bit of the rock top um, where the people are standing. So we want to bring the horizon fairly high. And there are a few boats in the distance as well, because this is actually um, uh, Old Harry Rocks. And this is where all the line of the cruise liners were um, parked up during lockdown. So I'm going to try and get a few of those in as well, if I can. So I'm going to bring the horizon probably about this high. I'm just going to make an indication of where the horizon is going to go. Fairly level, doesn't have to be perfect because obviously we're going to paint that. So then the distance between the horizon and where you start the rock defines how high up you're going to feel as though you're looking down on the situation. So I'm going to come down just a little bit from the, um, uh, the horizon line. And that's where the, the rock or the, the cliff top is going to start. OK, now I'm going to shove it over a little bit to the right because I don't want all this water down here. I just want an indication of water. So I'm going to bring the rock face and start the drop about here. <clears throat> and then it's going to come down reasonably vertically. It doesn't have to be totally straight because obviously it's rock. <clears throat> when we get to the bottom of the rock, then we've got some angle to worry about because obviously it's going away from us. So that so it's going uphill because this is below our eye level because we've already defined where our eye level is, which is obviously the horizon. So this line is going up to the, um, the horizon very steeply because obviously it's um, the edge of the rock. And then it kind of comes back. And then this is a face that's going away from us, if you can imagine that. Okay, so there's grass kind of coming down there. And then the rock sort of comes across, comes in a bit, and then it goes out of the picture on the left-hand side. Then we've got a situation where we've got the, um, the base of the rock here on the right kind of goes in before it then hits this cave area, because I don't know if you know um, old Harry rocks, but there's sort of a, a hollow um that goes all the way through and that's basically what that section is it's like a hollow so the angle of that kind of goes uphill to the left so make sure it's going up to the left and then it sort of disappears into that hollow the part of the rock that forms the curve that goes over the top let's start that about here so what I'm looking at is this space shape that the, the water is making as it goes into that hollow and trying to roughly draw that to give me an idea about where the, this curve is going to come over, up and over. Okay, then we sort of come down a bit and then the rock sort of then just wiggles its way out of the picture, like so. There are some grasses sort of in the foreground, um, which we could actually bring out a little bit further. So let's bring some of that in. So this is all gonna be sort of grasses and, and I don't want it to join up with that line. So I'm just gonna take it out there. Perhaps we can have some longer grasses to make it a bit more interesting. Then the top side of the rock, Obviously, it's very, very flat and narrow here. We don't get we don't get that much of it. There are a few figures which we're going to pop in. And then it widens as it sort of comes down and away. And then we get a condition where we then see the next bit of the cliff poking its head up. And then that goes back and away again. 
into the distance. And then we just get a little bit of an edge. And then this will be the cliff face coming down like so. Okay. So then the last thing then is we're just gonna pop in a few little figures. Now for the figures, all I'm gonna do, I'm not actually gonna draw them as figures. They're just gonna have like these little upright things. Some of them a bit fatter than others. I'm not really gonna worry about the heads because a lot of this is gonna get painted. Just doing these sort of vertical shapes, trying to space them out um, so they're not all in the same spot. Obviously, if you want them to be further away, then you just make the line narrower. So a few figures up there, and then we will have a couple, a couple over here, and then in the distance, perhaps a few little smaller ones just on that cliff face. So as I said, you don't really want to worry about arms, legs, you know, and all that sort of stuff. You just want to keep it very, very simple. Um, like so. And then as for the boats in the distance, let's just make an indication of where those are. So I'm going to come in, put a little bit of a funnel, and then there's a the front of a boat there. So I'm not going to draw the bottom because that just disappears into the horizon. Then we've got another little bit of a boat. So just the bow and then a pointy bit on top, which obviously the funnels. Another one there and then a smaller one, perhaps away in the distance. So make it a lot shorter. Like so. And that's enough. OK, so that's the drawing. Let's put the pen away. Uh, and then what I'm going to do over the top of this is I'm going to put a wash of um, some colour just to give a bit of um, I don't know, a bit of colour underneath showing through as we kind of progress the painting. And um, let's do it with, uh, do I want the green? I'm thinking pink. I want a bit of a pinky glow kind of coming through the, um, through from underneath. So I'm just gonna mix up a little bit of that um, permanent rose acrylic paint put some water in it. And then I'm just going to slosh this all over, all over my drawing. Not too bothered about it being neat, because obviously this is just an under, an under colour. And in fact, if you want some of these brush marks to show out, then that could be quite nice too. So we'll just scrub some of that on. More of the red out, I've used it all up already. Okay, that will probably do that. Shall I'm just going to squeeze out a bit more of the red. I've used it all already. I can get some out there. Is. Okay. Okay. Right. I'm just going to mute the mics again because I think we've got a little background for a second. Uh, let's mute. Oh. There we go. Okay. So let's put it back on the stand again. Okay, so I'm just going to dry that off now before we begin to work into it. So that's dry tissue. Let's 
starting then from the um, top down, it's kind of kind of work down the painting a little bit this way. Um, before I put, put some color in the sky though, what I'm gonna do is start to bring some color into the sea because that's pretty much the darkest element of the painting. Um, and I wanna get that in first before I start to worry about the lighter elements. So I'm gonna take some of the phthalo blue and I may even punch the sea up a little bit and exaggerate it a touch, give it a bit more color. Um, because we can obviously because we're painting, we don't need to stick religiously to what's there. So let's just see. So I'll put this down first, and if it's too dark, because we're a thick medium, we can just edit it later. Um, and obviously, if we don't like the color, we can just paint over it. But this is really just to give me um, some idea about where it's going. So I'm just gonna smudge that line a little bit with my finger um, and give us an idea about where we can base our other colors that will come on after this color. I'm just using a sort of a one inch flat brush here to block this in with. It's a good idea when you're working, particularly in the early stages to use as big a brush as you can so that um, you don't fiddle too much and you don't start to worry about detail and all of that stuff. It's really just about getting, getting these initial colors down as best you can and then working into them. So you can actually Bring that right the way across and even take up a little bit into those boat shapes. Because obviously they are way in the distance and they're pretty, pretty much just the same color as the, um, the sea. Let's bring this down the side of the rock face all the way down, then we get quite dark now down here. So I'm gonna put a bit of brown into that blue. That might be too dark, but it'll be okay, let's try that. So just cutting in underneath this archway. And then I will just indicate where that turns the corner, a bit more of the blue and the white. carve that in. So really you want to try as best you can to leave some of your brush marks in the in the paint so you don't blend it all out too much and you can have it a bit more brushy and energetic. So let's just lose all of that down there. Might need to go darker in that water later. To put those grasses back in when we get there. But that's fine for the moment. Okay, I'm going to wash the brush off now. So the next darkest element really is the grasses and the verge at the cliff top. So for that, I'm going to take some white again, a bit of yellow. So I'm looking now at the sort of the verge color and I want it to be a brownish, maybe go a little bit pinkier, a warm brownie pink gray, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, and again, just gonna guess this, it might need to go darker, but uh, for the moment, it's just to establish that color, something to work into. So it goes all the way up and then there's a bit on the edge there, a little bit on the cliff face. Coming all the way across, might go a bit bluer as we come to this left hand side. Just putting a bit more of the phthalo blue in there. 
And same again right out here on this cliff top. Take some of that color as well and I'm just gonna liberally slosh it on in the foreground here. Purposely not being too neat, might even use my left hand just to get it a bit more random. So just picking up a little bit more yellow, a little bit more blue, just to vary the color. Not worrying too much about the edge because we'll have to paint that back in once we've obviously established the cliff face. Okay, and I might even just drop a little bit of that color down on the bottom of the rock edge, just while I've got it on the brush. And then I'm going to clean that brush off. So <clears throat> clean. Being very lazy today, I'm just going to use the one brush, so I need to keep it clean. Now then, I'm going to start to establish the greens on top of the um, the grasses, the green grasses. So I'm going to take some of this teal, put the yellow in it. Okay. And start to bring a bit more yellow in there. Just gonna bring some of that onto this grass line. And again, this might not be the right color, but it's just about getting something down that we can then start to compare and um, work into as we go along. So the grass is getting very narrow up there as it goes into the um, into the distance. So that's all grass there. And we'll have a little bit of grass just on top of this one. Just tapping the edge of the brush just to keep it nice and narrow. Let's flick a little bit of that into this foreground area. Just while I've got it on the brush, keeping it all nice and loose and wash that off again. What I'm gonna do now is to block in some of the sky, block in some of the cliff, because obviously those are the lighter elements. And then as I said, once that's all in, we can then start to play around and finesse the various shapes and, uh, and so on. So I'm just taking some white, Got a little bit of teal in there, unfortunately, but never mind. Let's put some cobalt blue in there. So this is just starting off the um, our sky color, a bit more blue. Tiny bit of thalo in there as well. Not too much because thalo is a very, very powerful color. Okay, let's just start to block some sky in. Have a bit of a broken sky because I want some of the purples to show through. A bit more white. A little bit of the rosy color in there. So I want perhaps a few little softer clouds or shapes in the in the sky. Not too much, but just a bit. Now, when I get down to the horizon level, because the original color is dry, I will need to try and soften, soften it off a bit. So I'm just gonna use my finger and rub it along that edge, just to sort of rub those two colors, well, one color over the top as a, as a softer edge um, so that it's not too sharp. So, <clears throat> and then a bit more, oh, I've picked up some thalo. 
just work that in. So just working one color into the other. So I've got a little boat here, so I'm just gonna just bring that shape of the boat down and then across towards the next boat. And again, just soften, soften it off a little bit. Oops, a little bit too low. A little bit more of this lighter color to my next ship boat. I think they're ships, they're not called boats really. Um, probably making them feel too small. They're quite big vessels, so uh, just smudge the edge when I get to it, just with my finger. And you need to do all that obviously while the while the paint is wet. There's no point trying to do that while it's dry. <clears throat> Just give that a bit more shape there. And then just smudge that out. It's gone a bit too far, never mind. Okay, and I'm just gonna work into the sky a little bit more just to soften bits and even some bits out. Just using my finger. Blend out some edges and work some of it together. Okay. So I'm going to clean off that brush and then start to establish the cliff face. And then we'll come back and then we'll pay a bit more attention to the wall drop in the distance and, and so on. So the cliff face itself is very, very light. There's a lot of white in there. Um, you can even put a little bit of some raw sienna in it as well in places and then i'm just gonna start to bring some of these shapes thinking about it being a vertical surface so are you going down towards the water but also having different directions within that a little bit more raw sienna a bit of the blue to gray Give it some grayness as a variation. <clears throat> There's some more white. So really, in the, because it's a sort of a white cliff, chalk cliff, having to use some very close tones with some slight variation in it. Not too much, just slight variation. A little bit of teal as well. Probably too much. Let's cut into some of these grasses down here. It comes down all the way to the sea. Gonna jut out a little bit at the bottom. And this will be the um, bit of the cliff that arches over. A bit more white. <clears throat> so using the paint in its thickest form here, so very, very little, well, no water in fact. Obviously, the more moisture you put into the paint the less coverage you're going to get. <clears throat> so I'm trying to use the paint in a pretty thick manner. Just putting a bit of brown in there as well in places to add a bit of variation. More brown. <clears throat> A 
break up this edge. Some more brownie colors. Um, with acrylics as well, obviously, where if you do use them in a thicker manner, they'll dry a little bit slower on the board, so you can actually manipulate them uh, for a little bit longer than you would if you painted with them thinly, which can help with the, the modeling of the colors. So I'm just cleaning my brush off there. Then I'm gonna dip into a bit of a bluer version of the white. So cleaner blue, just down here where the, where the cave is being formed. We've got some different shapes to the bottom of the cliff. So that kind of comes up. And I'm generalizing here as well. I'm not putting all the little lumps and bumps in. I'm kind of flattening it out to a greater extent to simplify it. And then once it's in, obviously then we can finesse it if need be, as I said. Yeah, that comes to the edge of the cliff there. Just clean the brush up again. And then I'm going to put in the face that's furthest away, which is actually pretty light. So it's lighter than the um, this side. So I'm actually going to put more white into the paint. Bring that all the way out. sort of curves in and up. Okay, now then the final bit on that, clean the brush off. So I'm gonna put a darker color down now. So coming up under the, under the archway here, a little bit more brown. A little bit more phthalo. Perhaps a bit of cobalt as well. So it's to make a greyish colour, but darker grey colour than the colours I've already got on here, or the tones I should say. So it kind of comes up and then starts to form this hollow. You've got to be careful we don't go too dark with this because it's not like it's a, a cave with a no light coming in. It does actually have light coming in through from the back. You can't just make it a very, very dark shape. It's got to have a bit of light in there. Okay, and then we'll have a few little, little bits of variation down there. fiddle with it too much just yet. <clears throat> Bit of grey on this side because there's a slight darker face there. And then we've got these sort of, I don't know whether they're grass crop outcrops or what, bits of foliage or something growing in the, in the cliff face. Just pop a few of those in, just to give an indication where they are. They may go darker as we progress the painting. Okay, clean the brush off again. And then one final area on that cliff face, I've just got to pop this one in, in the distance. So I'm just going to take a lighter version of that grey colour, 
bring that down over here. Keeping it a lot more simple than the than this face. So just a tiny bit of the teal in it. Because obviously the more detail I put back here, the less it will it will recede. I want it to kind of be a bit more in the distance. Okay, that will do that. So let's give that a good dry now before we move on to the next part. <clears throat> I'm going to work back into the C area. Um, now to do this, I'm going to use uh, a little bit of extender. So this is just the paint extender that you can get for acrylics. Because I want to be able to blend this edge out a little bit as I bring the two colors together. If I can get the lid open that is. So let's just put a bit of this on my palette down there. I'm going to take a little bit of the extender first and just run it along along the line. Oh, I might even go over all the ships as well. So I'm going to take some white, mix up my sky color. Put a bit of teal in there as well. Let's go a bit more turquoisey in the sky. So try and get the tone roughly the same as what I had before, just varying the color slightly. I'm going to lay this down fairly thick. And then I can rub that then into that extender, get it to start to blend into the um the color that's already on there so that i can get it nice and soft not too too heavy come a bit lower So the bottoms of these boats really doesn't matter as long as you've got a sort of a shape at the top that resembles a pointy bit maybe at one end and then maybe some sort of um, structures on top it will read more like a boat in the mist or the distance or kind of a way in the atmosphere, which is what I kind of want. I don't want them to be too obvious. And now I'm just going to clean my brush. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of the blue into that color. So it's a bit more cobalt, find a bit more phthalo, and then start to work that underneath that area that I've just put on. And then I can rub that back up into those colors to get a really soft, soft edge to the horizon. Um, and make sure it's not too, too solid. Just bring a bit more of that all the way through. blending it out just with my finger. And then come down into the existing blues that I've already got on there. Even 
a little bit. Okay, I'm going to flatten that out because the glare off the, from the light is stopping me seeing what I'm actually doing. Okay. Right. So now I'm going to bring a bit of that same blue or some of those blues. Slightly darker, a bit more phthalo in it. It's even a tiny bit of the raw sienna so that I can start to work some of those colors into the and also shape up some of the area around the around the cliffs perhaps losing a little bit of these some of these reds not all of them, but just bringing some of the colour of the sea down a bit lower. Blend that in. Same over here. Just working it together. I can always pop these figures back in if I lose too much of them um, with a bit of paint or even with a marker pen, perhaps at the end. We've got a bit long on the end there. Let's just reduce the size of those. A bit more blue in there. Okay, now coming down to the um, the uh, the base of the cliff, much more blue in it now, more thalo blue. So I'm going to work a bit of variation into the blues of the sea was a boat con a boat trail um it kind of cuts through but I won't I don't think I'll bother with that. Just kind of a bit of variation in the blues. Leave them a bit more brush marky so I'm not going to knock all the brush marks out as we come closer. Try and keep that keep some of the brush marks. A bit more teal in there. It's even a bit more of the raw sienna. Green it up slightly. So as I come down to the base of the rock, I'm just going to tidy the shape up. It needs to come in and out. Perhaps a little bit steeper there as well. Clean off my brush. Take a bit of brown into those greeny dark colors I had earlier, just to define the bottom shape of the cliff a bit more. Because as it sort of drops down into the darker waters, it gets pretty dark there. I'm just going to darken it up a bit more. Lay in some nice strong darker tones, a bit more phthalo, a bit more brown. Coming down, making some patterns in the water. The odd mark here and there. Deeper water perhaps. perhaps it's very dark over here. Okay, 
and tidy it up around the, the grasses a bit more. Clean the brush off. Then I'm going to work in some lighter sort of brown, brown greys at the base of the cliff here because it goes quite brown at the bottom before we go into those very dark colours. I'm just bringing some of these darker elements in. The bottom of the cliff. even bring some of that out on this left hand side. Trying to give it a bit of a wobbly line. I want it to be too neat. <clears throat> and I can also use this as a tool to kind of suggest different angles within the, the surface of the rocks, sort of little dips and divots, bring some shape up here. So these need to go a bit darker up the top now. It's a bit more blue and the brown together. Just gonna darken the edge up a little bit, not too much. Had a few little dark spots. Maybe even touch a little bit into the figures. And a few darker bits, perhaps on this side. Just to sort of tie it together a little bit more. More of the raw sienna. Touch of white. Just trying to use the very edge of the brush here to add a few more interesting marks in places. A bit more over here. Some of these figures are a little bit lighter. Okay, and then some of the grasses now. So just chiseling the brush. So using the very, very edge of the brush to sort of give me these uh, more narrow marks. Kind of link the two areas together, perhaps with a bit of grass like so. <clears throat> Bring a bit of pink into that. A few pinky grass marks. Obviously being red, yeah, complementary of the green, it will help to 
tie it all together. The odd mark down the bottom here. But you can have a little rock or something just in the outcrop. Pink just over here. Okay, and then I'm going to go slightly more bluey gray now in the cliff. So just putting a bit of blue into those sort of pinky colors I was just using to add another another tone of grey really, another variation, just to break back into the brownier areas. too dark, I need to go a bit lighter back there. Just a bit lighter in the greys. Okay, variation on the end there. few spots of variation in those lighter blues. Okay, and then back into my colors that I used in the sea. Just gonna add some variation just at the bottom of the cliff. There's a few indications of some ripples, not too much. Okay, now I'm just gonna tidy up the ships now. I'm gonna use a smaller brush for that. Any time I've changed brush here today. So back into the colors for the for the sea, which is the blues um, that we were using earlier. So I need to just test that there. It's about the same tone as the blues around it. That's a little bit too light. It's come a bit darker. A bit more of the thalo in it. So by just touching the color to the existing water or the color that I put on for the sea, I can see whether the, the tone is about the same, which that roughly is about the same. So then I'm just gonna tidy up these boat shapes a little bit. Just make them a little bit more um, structured. They tend to be a bit higher on the roof area, the top area. And then this one similarly. Perhaps a bit more white in there as well. Some lighter tones. Oops, that's way too light. And obviously as the tone gets closer to the other tone, it will just disappear into the existing color. And then we've got another lighter ship in the distance. So let's try and get him in. 
and this one will be very much very much lighter because it's right in the distance you almost want to hardly hardly see it um, in comparison to the other ones this brush okay I'm just going to tidy up the sky around those and again I'm just going to use a slightly smaller not as small but a smaller brush that I can chisel in with another flat but it's a bit of a smaller flat so I'm going to mix up some of the if I can find some space in my palette Just try and clean up a bit of palette so I can put a bit more of that sky colour in. A bit limited by space if I want to keep this on screen, unfortunately. So let's take some white, a bit of the teal, a bit of the cobalt. Trying to mix up, it doesn't have to be exactly the same color, but it needs to be about the same tone as the sky color that I've already put on, um, just so I can start to cut in and tidy up these shapes a little bit. Because obviously, at this distance, we don't want any anything to be too too big or bulbous or not quite the right shape. So, a few spots of that elsewhere, just to um, harmonize it. A bit more of this tealy color elsewhere in the. Uh, painting. It will help to just um, bring it all together. This one looks a bit more like one of the cargo ships that go out of Southampton rather than the uh, cruise liners, but never mind. gone a bit far, let's just get some glue again. So this obviously is the nice thing about using a thicker medium. If you do make a mistake or go too far with the colour, you can just paint over the top nice and easily. Okay. Right, let me just see how that's looking. I may just put a few little, um, little yacht or, or masts in, because there's always, there's always some sort of boating or um, ships usually, sailing ships around this area. So I'll just mix up a little bit of the raw sienna and some white and a bit of blue. It's kind of an off white. Let's use this just to bring a few small not too many, but just a couple of little vertical shapes to indicate perhaps some yachts or some sailing vessels. And I'm not really going to worry about the bottoms. Just let those disappear. 
I don't want to bring them too big. View at slightly different angles. You can have one out here as well. Okay, and then a couple of birds. So we just put in a few little indications and maybe some little birds flying around. So taking the same the same colour, I'm just going to touch touch the painting and then flick and then touch and flick. And perhaps we'll do another one going this way. So a few little birdies and then a really good way of pushing things right back into the distance is if you can get some overlap. So here I'm going to actually overlap or we'll try and overlap my boats to make sure they do look quite far away. Uh, let's have a couple in the sky. They might show up. I want to get them in slightly different directions, not all the same direction. Okay, maybe one more. Let's have one more here. Uh, where should we have him? Let's have him here. There we are. 